Hey guys, today's video we're going to talk about UV rays with reptiles, heating, light placement, etc. But I thought I'd start this off showing you my chameleon, Guido. Um, he's just always upside down. I, uh, there's nothing I can do. Which, it, it, it's not that it's bad, but it's just hilarious. He goes up here, he sleeps. Let's see if we can get a zoom in. He's just chilling. And I worry, you know, he might fall. Like, yeah, his his feet are all locked in, but... I mean, oh, oh, God. Now we've, we've woken him up. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, let's talk about UV. Since we're going to be talking about UV, some of this video is going to have a, some, some off-color tint to it because when I put the light by the UV bulbs, we're going to get a green tint. Um, because the camera is picking up the, the UVB wavelength. So there's nothing about it. Nothing we can do. So, reptile setups, UVA, heat, UV with light, UVB, ultraviolet rays. That's how you're going to let them absorb their calcium. You're going to prevent bone disease. Great. How do you set it up correctly? Well, there's really only one way. You need a meter. Um, that there's no other, there's really no other perfect way to do it. Uh, I have the, um, 6.5 R here, solar meter. This thing is awesome because it'll allow you to measure the intensity of the UV ray. And, and that's a good way to also show you when you have to replace your UV bulb. Because remember guys, your bulb light can be on. If you're using a mercury vapor bulb or a complex fluorescent or just a strip, there's a lot of times you can still be getting light or in this case, light plus heat, but your UV will be too weak because the bulb is not producing enough UV. It's also a great way if you get a new bulb to test it right when you get it to make sure it's functioning properly, even though most bulb manufacturers when you get them, they say that they test the bulbs and they test the UV before they seal them up. And some will come with a, like a QC uh, little certificate saying, hey, we tested this. It's producing the UV within this range. So one is to make sure the UV is functioning correctly. But two is to make sure your branch placement is at the correct distance. Um, because there is a thing as too little UV, as everyone knows, but the most common misconception is, yes, there is too much UV. And too, too little or too much is really bad. Too little can lead to metabolic bone disease. Their bones will be brittle, they'll be weak, because even though maybe you're giving them calcium powder as a supplement or a, a food that's high in calcium, if they're not absorbing enough UV, they can't metabolize that calcium and so they can get MBD, they can just be unhealthy, frail, weak, low on energy. Too much UVB, to be specific, can be really bad because it can stress out your animal. Um, he'll hide from the UV, which will, because it's too strong, which will also have him not absorb correct amounts. So that can be a problem. Now, Things to keep into consideration is, like, this has a screen lid, so this is going to diffuse some UV right away, and certain screen lids are more dense. If you have a glass top or it's hanging in your cage, it'll be enough. Also, you can have varying distances where UV in this area is quite a bit lower, right? It's, it's, it's lower, and there's no heat coming from here. The basking spot will have different levels, right? So he can bask here or up here. So this would, you know, be warmer, a little bit more UV, but he can come down, be cooler, less UV, and, and, and he can find spots throughout the cage that are lower, will still get UV, and provide not as much, more shaded areas, or come down and go, on, you know, inside the plant. So things like foliage, things like that. So it's really important to have... Uh, a variety of heights that way your animal will feel comfortable if they need a lot of UV they can go here but the caveat is that basking spot where that animal is gonna go when they're right to thermoregulate 
you need to need to make sure that that area is not over UV'd because the animal is going to go here when he needs to warm up. And so he's, if there's too much UV in that area, he can't really self-regulate. So take a meter and you'll put it at different areas. And there is a little eye right in there that will measure the UV. So like I said, so this is strong. So if we come up really close to the bulb and we put our meter on, the meter is going to be, and it's going to get a very read, a varying depending on how I angle this. So if we go directly under it, 40, 50, I mean, that's, that's a massive amount. That's sunburn waiting to happen for your animal, like death waiting to happen. Although, my chameleons sometimes like to crawl around directly under this thing. As you can see, his tail's under it now. I don't get it. So, so you give them at varying heights, right? So for a veiled chameleon, um, you, you know, you want to stay below eight is a good rule of thumb. So from, from this low bat as your most intense. So from this basking area, which is about here, and we pop it in, boom, 3.5, really good, safe. If we came down lower, let's say he wanted to get some UV, but he wasn't going to get a lot, 1.1 and we can go much lower. Underneath the mercury vapor bulb at a far branch, two. So much, much stronger bulb, the mercury vapor, vapor bulb. Gives off heat and UV. And then here, the main basking area. Come in, 5.6. Gorgeous. Oh, we've disturbed him. So how do you get these correct readings, right? You, you can look them up, they're online. When you order this particular one, it does come with this nice little pamphlet that breaks down, hey, you know, your different Ferguson zones. And then not all, but an example of the reptiles in there. So, hey, these are more shade creatures, you know, crested leopard geckos. They need per pretty much none. They get enough UV from just normal light, which is why you see that no, with no no UV beyond there. All right. So here's Bernard, my blue tongue skinks enclosure, and he's got this bulb right on top of this cage. His screen is very dense. It's very clear. So I used to have this hovering up much higher, a couple inches higher when I was first setting this up, and even that small distance was crushing his UV. Um, and most people will do that because it lit the cage more evenly. But now we've got a focused area. So when you come in and you get a reading, you'll actually get a good amount. Now, now look, I'm not far from this bulb. But because of the type of screen and the type of bulb, this is not a mercury vapor bulb, and this UV bulb is not as strong, it's only given you, you know, two, three. He's, oh, he's, he's a bit shy right now. So if I needed more UV in this situation, which when you consult the chart, you don't, he'll fall within one to three, I would have put a stronger UV bulb in that spot because I can't get it any closer than where it's currently sitting at without changing his enclosure or modifying it. Now we come over to Archimedes, my bearded dragon's enclosure, and you know bearded dragons like to be up on their hammock, but also the spot. So again, multiple UV. So if he's obviously underneath his hammock, this hammock is gonna be a super diffuser. But even still, where his spot is, and you gotta kinda go down to where the reptile's height, I know that this is gonna come in around an eight. Perfect for bearded dragons, great. You hungry? What's this? This is how we test the UV in your cage. Yeah. Oh, no, no. No, 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 not food. Let's see if you got any UV. But um, I'll try to show you from under here. So 0 0.8, 0 0.9, as rough as that is, huge diffuser. Obviously, if he went under the log, complete diffuser to zero. Or move over to another log or under some more hammocks, 
so he can thermoregulate and control the UV real easy. When we come over to Mongo's cage, right guys? Oh, oh no. Uh-oh, he was sleeping. But when we come over to Mongo's cage, guys, it's the same exact thing. Mercury vapor bulb here on top of this fake rock structure and then his hammock. So he can be up on the hammock, pull in heat, still be well within his UV. He can move up it to get more. He can lower himself down to the rock height to get less. He can go underneath the hammock to get barely any or he can come way across the cage to the dark rock, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and get virtually none, or even go in that little shadowed cubby and get zero. So we come over to Simba's enclosure that he's using now, and Simba is always under there. Let's see if we can show him. What's he doing? Oh, there he is. Hey, buddy. How you doing? You doing good? Oh, here he comes. Hi. Yeah, this is the camera. But he just has a normal LED bulb in here. Just to give myself light. Come in, 0 0.10. You know, maybe he gets a little bit reflected, but he doesn't get any. He's new, calming him down. And there's a lot of debate whether savannah monitors need uvb or they don't um, i'm not going to get into that part with them now all i'll say is when it comes time to do another video on his enclosure and uvb i will go into it uh, in great depth and talk to you guys about it because we will get into that but let's see if we can get him to come out for a little treat for you guys just to see how crazy this guy is I absolutely love him. Okay. Let's see if he's still up there. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Come on. Let's come say hi to the camera. He's just getting through. And there may even still be some remnants of a shed. Gonna eat? Oh, score. Mmm. Gone in two seconds. All right. So UVV bulbs, right? They're... they're they're not super expensive, you know. Oh, hey, Speedy. They're not super expensive, but still, you want to just make sure that the reptile is getting a good bulb when you get it, is not going to be stressed, and is going to live long and be really, ha you know, really healthy. And this will tell you when you need to change the bulb. So you don't need to change them every year, like some recommend. I'll have one or two bulbs on spare. And I'll test my bulbs. I test my bulbs every month when I know it's getting time to test. You can come in. Boom. Get my reading. Cool. 6.6 .6 in his basking spot. Great. Now he comes down under the foliage a lot. 1.8. 1.5. He's like, what the heck is this thing for? Sometimes he, this is where he goes down there to drink from his waterfall. 8.8. 0.9. That's how you make sure they stay really healthy. What are you up to today? You're making the camera hard to focus. There we go. Wow. Hello. He's mad. He's always mad. Do I know how I know he's mad? It's got that poof underneath right there. He won't bite me. He never bites. Here's Brutus. Now, Brutus ton of different area he can go so same thing he can control he can control his uv it's a little bit hard to measure this one uh go higher go lower go underneath get nothing so he's in he's in he's in a good good spot to really really self-regulate i need uv i need heat i need this i need that he can pull in whatever he wants. Normally he's over here because his heater's over here. Same thing though, he pulls in some UV, so it's great. And I'm just trying to be super informative to you guys. I don't do the flashy videos and all this cutting out and, 
and this and that. I'm really here to help you guys out to make sure you have good enclosures for your reptiles. So the last one, Mario, come on, focus in on him. My Chinese water dragon, I shouldn't say the last one, but the last one for this video. Same thing, complex fluorescent there, heater there, mercury vapor there, there's his basking spot. So you can get his different readings depending on if he's swimming, depending on if he's down here and he wants some shade and barely any different levels on this log. And, and, and it's really important here, guys, when you have two sources that you're going to get a combined reading, right? So you, you point this thing towards one. All right, from here, he gets a point six from that. People might say, hey, that's not a lot of UV. Uh, it's not a lot, but when you point it over at the other one, now he's getting one. So this lower area is now 1.6, but he can come up under his basking spot, grab five here really easily. And again, that can be controlled by just hiring or lowering the bulb on the top, which is really good.